In this video, we're going to break down everything you need to know about line of sight in Marvel Crisis Protocol. It works a little bit differently from other games, so let's jump straight in and take a look. Hey guys, Rich from Rich Me Gaming. Hope everyone is doing fantastically well. And yes, as the title states, in this video, we're going to break down everything you need to know about line of sight in Marvel Crisis Protocol. And as I mentioned, it does work slightly differently to at least any other miniature game that I've played, and I'm sure miniature games that you've played as well. So first of all, let's jump over to the rule book and let's actually read through what it says in the rule book, and then we'll break that down. So line of sight. A character has line of sight, LOS, to another character or an object if a straight, unobstructed line can be drawn from any part of the character's base to the other character's base or the object. The line can pass unobstructed through characters but not through terrain features with a larger size than the other character or the object. A character always has line of sight to itself. If a character is on top of a terrain feature, add the size of the character and the size of the terrain together for the purposes of determining LOS. A character on top of a terrain feature ignores that terrain feature when determining if it has line of sight to another character or object. Okay, so they're the words as they are written in the rule book, but well, what do they actually mean and how do they translate into a real game? Well, before we actually jump into how we determine line of sight, it's worth pointing out a couple of things just to get your head around that will make this whole process much, much easier. And um, the first thing is that this game doesn't use any sort of true line of sight. Um, so there's no, oh, I can see your sword poking above the hill, or I can see your blaster pistol poking outside of that building. Um, that Those sorts of things are completely irrelevant in this game. Um, so what are we concerned with? Well, the first thing that we're concerned with is the size of terrain and the size of the characters that are involved uh, in the actual uh, attack or superpower. Now, when we say size, we don't mean we don't mean their physical size, so you know their actual structural dimensions or anything like that. Um, every single character and every single piece of terrain in Marvel Crisis Protocol has its own designated size. Now, for characters, you can find a character si size on their stat card. Uh, you can see here, for example, that uh, we've got Thanos is size three, Rocket is size one, and then for terrain, if it's official AMG terrain, turn it upside down, and you're going to see a number on the bottom uh, that will show you what size that piece of terrain is and lastly if it is third party terrain that you're using uh, there's a handy guide here in the rule book that you can use but I would always always recommend having a quick chat with your opponent before you start the game just to agree what size everything is going to be just to make sure that there's no issues later on in the game. So the second thing then is that when we're actually drawing that line um, the only things that we're concerned about are the bases of the characters. Now obviously characters come in three different size bases, small, medium and large, so that will have an impact to some extent. Um, but anything else that's on the base, if you've made your character taller or there's things hanging off or you've done it in a certain way and you've converted it, none of that is going to matter because the only things that we're concerned with are the actual bases themselves and we'll go into exactly how that works in a moment. So lastly then, um, you know, why do we need line of sight in this game? What is it used for? Well, line of sight is used first and foremost for determining whether or not your character can attack another character. To be able to attack a character, you need to be able to target them. And to target them, you need to have line of sight. Um, there are some superpowers that also require line of sight as well. Uh, and equally, there are also some attacks that don't require you to have line of sight. But the rule of thumb is, if it isn't stated on the attack, you need line of sight. And if it isn't stated on the superpower, you do not need line of sight. And there's always going to be some exceptions, but just read through the text and it should help you through it. Okay, so line of sight, drawing a line of sight from one character to another. Let's start off with a really basic example. We have our Rocket Raccoon and we have our Thanos. And as you can see, there's nothing in the way we can draw a line from a, any part of Rocket's base to any part of Thanos's base unobstructed, nothing in the way, so 
Thumbs up for Rocket. He's got line of sight of Thanos and he can make his attack. Okay, so let's mix things up a bit. Uh, the Hulk is on the board and the Hulk is stood in between Rocket and Thanos. Now the Hulk is size 4 in this game, but actually that is completely irrelevant because whether or not the Hulk is an ally to Rocket or he is an ally to Thanos, he is not going to block line of sight for Rocket Raccoon. So rule of thumb is characters do not block line of sight. Now there may be something in the game that changes that in the future but right now um, no character can block line of sight so Rocket can fire away into Thanos without having to worry about hitting Hulk. Okay so let's get rid of Hulk and now let's replace Hulk with Deadpool's taco truck so we now have a piece of terrain sat in between Rocket and Thanos. So there's a couple of other things that we now need to check. Um, the first thing we need to look at is can we just draw a line unobstructed from Rocket to Thanos? Irrespective of the size of the terrain that's uh, between them, if that's the case, then that's absolutely fine. Rocket is still going to have line of sight. But as we can see from this example, Thanos is sat firmly behind Deadpool's taco truck. So there's no way that he can draw a line without it going through the truck. We now need to look at the size of the truck and the size of Thanos. Because if you remember from the wording of the rules, it says the line can pass unobstructed through characters but not through terrain features with a larger size than the other character or the object. If Deadpool's taco truck is size 3, which it absolutely is, and Thanos is size 3, that taco truck is not larger than Thanos, therefore Rocket can still shoot through the taco truck and it's going to hit Thanos. So yes, he can still draw line of sight. So Rocket has ended his activation. He's made his attacks into Thanos and it is time for the Mad Titan to strike back. Now, first of all, um, we know that he has a cosmic blast of range three and we can see that Rocket is well within range three. And if Rocket could shoot Thanos, then Thanos can shoot Rocket, right? That's just how it works. Well, not in this game. Um, the size of the character that's making the attack is completely irrelevant. The only thing that we are concerned with is the character that is defending. So if we look at this exact same example, but we will reverse. So Thanos is trying to make an attack into Rocket. We already know that we can't draw a line of sight from Thanos or a line from any part of Thanos's base to any part of Rocket's base without it passing through terrain. Then we need to look at the size of that terrain and look at the size of the target character. Well, the taco truck is size three and Rocket is size one. So for the purposes of this attack, Rocket is completely out of line of sight of Thanos. Therefore, Thanos cannot attack Rocket without at least making a move first. So for our next example, uh, Rocket, the lovable trash panda that he is, is now stood atop a piece of terrain, one of the garbage boxes that we've got there. Um, and Thanos wants to make an attack into him again. Um, now, you may look at this and say, well, we couldn't do it previously, so we obviously can't do it now because Thanos is size three, there's a size three taco truck in the way, and Rocket is only size one. However, when determining line of sight, if a character is stood on top of a piece of terrain, we add the two sizes together. So what do we mean by that? Well, Rocket is size one. The trash can that he is stood on top of is size two. So adding them together for the purposes of determining line of sight, he now has a size of three. The Deadpool taco truck is size three, which is the same size as Rocket and the, uh, the trash can combined, which means that in this example, Thanos can actually use his cosmic blast and shoot into Rocket. Okay then, so for the last example, I want to show this one because this is one that often catches people out. We've got Rocket and Thanos at it again. That little trash panda is holding his own against the Mad Titan, uh, but the Mad Titan is stood on top of the Sanctum Sanctorum, all the way at the very, very back of there. And we have um, the little trash panda on the ground and he wants to make an attack into Thanos. So do we think that he has line of sight of Thanos in this example? Well, if you said yes, you are absolutely right. Um, because Thanos is stood on top of the terrain, we actually ignore the, the terrain itself. So we can make an attack 
into Thanos, even though he's on top of a size five piece of terrain. And even though it may look like we don't actually have line of sight to him, if we go right down to the bottom and look all the way up, as we mentioned, we don't worry about true line of sight in this game. And we almost play it from a bird's eye view down. Uh, that's one of the best ways to, to sort of describe it. You could play this game completely on a 2D plane uh, and it would play in exactly the same way. Um, so yes, absolutely, Rocket can unleash hell into Thanos, even though Thanos is stood all the way on top of the Sanctum Sanctorum and all the way back. All you need to make sure of is that you are within range of that character you want to attack. And there we go, guys. That is everything you need to know about line of sight in Marvel Crisis Protocol. And hopefully that's helped in some way, shape or form, making it much clearer than just the, the written texts on the page as well. If you've liked this video in any way, shape or form, please leave a like. It really, really does help. And if you want to support the channel even further, we do have our Patreon up and running where from as little as a pound a month, you can support the channel and help us continue to make these videos, plus some other stuff that we've got coming in the future as well. We've got our merch store up and running now where you can find all sorts of MCP inspired teas. So head on over to that. And we've got our Discord server as well that's completely free to join. Almost 500 people on there now talking all things MCP, MCU, plus a whole bunch of other board games as well. And you'll find all of your other favourite content creators on there also. Guys, as always, it leaves me with just enough time to say stay well, keep safe, and until next time, bye for now.